Right now here at 4 o'clock today marks exactly one week since Hurricane Helene slammed our state, killing hundreds. People in Western North Carolina still at this point without power, without water, still searching in many cases for missing loved ones. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty and I'm Ashley Rowe. Some are still evacuated or are living in shelters. Others digging out of mud covered homes and businesses. Here is the latest on the recovery effort at this hour. At least 109 have been confirmed dead. More than 220,000 customers are still without power. Some towns, including Banner Elk, are now telling people if they live in an area without power and water, Town officials strongly recommend leaving indefinitely. Throughout the past week, we have heard from so many of our viewers and the people of the western part of our state. Many of them tell us they want their stories to be heard. We are working hard to tell those stories. We have had crews on the ground in 35 different communities throughout western North Carolina since Friday, bringing you those stories. And of course, we are not done. No, the communities, businesses, and lives of our neighbors to the west are forever changed. The recovery efforts, unfortunately, nowhere near finished. We will bring you daily reports throughout the weekend and in the week to come, making sure each of the impacted communities are being heard. Our team coverage begins tonight with Eric Miller. He's been at at least six of the 25 impacted counties. Tonight we find him at a water distribution site in Black Mountain. Eric, you pressed federal officials today and Governor Roy Cooper on this situation. Give us an idea of what they had to say. Well, Dan, we asked Governor Cooper specifically about that advice coming out of Banner Elk earlier today that folks in areas without power, without water, should consider getting out, whether that's something that should apply to other impacted areas of the state. He said he can't comment on that right now, instead stressing that the federal, state, and local governments are all continuing to surge aid here in western North Carolina. And you take a look at some of this video here, you get a sense of what some of that aid is looking like. This was taken just about a mile mile up the road from where we are right now, about two miles below North Fork Reservoir. This was one of three key water sources for the city of Asheville and one of two that remains offline. You see the scale of work that's happening there, the need that is still present, and the amount of uh, effort that is left to go before that's connected. Still, we did get some good news from federal officials, including the director of FEMA. This right here is what she had to say. And the words from her is things are actually going better than they expected in the repair. Um, that doesn't give us a time frame still yet, but uh, they're making progress and that's really encouraging. Now, in the meantime, Governor Cooper says the state is working on more temporary solutions, trying to get people bottled water, food, all the resources they need. That includes airdropping things out to remote communities that remain cut off. And another piece of advice that we heard today, you know, folks, they not only need drinking water, they also need water to bathe in, to flush their toilets. During this week, we've seen folks harvesting flood water out of the French Broad River. Today, Buncombe County officials said people absolutely should not do that. The river itself should be considered hazardous. In Black Mountain, Eric Miller, WRAL News. Eric, thank you so much. People doing whatever they can. It yep. has been a long week. Eric, thank you. And this is Brian Schrader. All new at four in the WRAL Live Center, Dolly Parton this afternoon, along with her foundation and Walmart, have committed $8 million to Helene Relief. It was announced at a press conference in Newport, Tennessee this afternoon. Parton got some attention by changing the lyrics of one of her best known songs to fit the situation. Helene, 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 you came in here and broke us all apart. Helene, 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 but we're all here to mend these broken hearts. And that's what I'm doing here. Today, I wanted to announce that from myself personally, just from my own bank account, I'm donating a million dollars today. But, but there's a lot to be done, and we're trying to find other ways to even raise more funds. A million from Parton, a million from her Dollywood Foundation, and $6 million from Walmart. Of course, she is a native of eastern Tennessee. Back in 2016, they had those terrible wire wildfires in Sevier County, Tennessee, her hometown. And she created a fund that raised $12 million for recovery from that disaster.
Brian, th thank you. Dolly Parton always rising to the occasion. Today, Fort Liberty soldiers packed up and headed out to Western North Carolina. Members of the 18th and 82nd Airborne are heading into the region to help with relief efforts. WRL's Gilbert Bays was the only reporter there as they prepared for the trip. We'll bring you that update from Fort Liberty later in the newscast. In the meantime, state lawmakers return to Raleigh next week with Hurricane Helene recovery on the agenda. Legislative leaders say they plan to vote Wednesday on a disaster relief package to boost the state's response. House and Senate leaders say they're working to determine what the needs will be, including in the legislation there. State officials have already begun compiling spending requests. The state has $4.75 billion in its rainy day fund and hundreds of millions more in reserves for 